So what you're seeing here is an archetypal image. It's a man and a woman on horseback. And it's an image that traditionally represents the month of April or the month of May in medieval and early modern calendars. It's late spring. It's a time when things are blooming and when the animal and the human world are alive with what we'll just call romantic and procreative possibility. My name is Patricia Akimi, and I'm an associate professor of English at Rutgers University, Newark. My research is on race, gender, class, and other forms of social difference in early modern English literature, especially Shakespeare and Renaissance drama, and travel writing. And I'm currently at work on a book about women's travel and travel writing in the early modern period. That's the late 16th and early 17th centuries. I spent a few weeks at the National Sporting Library in late 2020 researching a chapter on courtship and riding on the role that travel on horseback plays in rituals of courtship and marriage. And specifically, I was looking for images depicting a man and a woman riding together on the same horse. These images are actually very common, but they are not easy to track down because there are very few databases that tag images from this period in enough detail to be able to simply do a keyword search for man and woman on horseback, and especially not with images that appear in printed texts. And riding on horseback actually isn't even quite the right word to describe what you're seeing in these images. Um, in the early modern period, English people would have said that this is a man riding with a woman riding pillion, which is the name for a little pillow or pad that attaches to the back of his saddle and on which she would be sitting. Or they might say that the woman was riding behind, or they might have called this riding double or said that the horse was carrying double. And of course, all these terms are evocative ones that have plenty of like rated R or triple X double meanings in them. Writing double was a prelude to or a suggestion that a couple was romantically and physically involved and that either a marriage or a baby or both were on the way. The image was so suggestive that actually there are real court cases from this time period of, of things like a father suing a young single man because he was seen riding double with his unmarried daughter. Um, a, a case like that might end with sort of like a shotgun wedding or other penalties. If an unmarried pair were seen riding double, they might find themselves in front of a magistrate accused of other more illicit and intimate activity. And there's a slightly darker side to this imagery, which points towards the lack of autonomy that women had in the early modern period. So one obvious question to ask in looking at these images is, why are they riding double in the first place? Why aren't the women walking on foot if they need to be or just riding alone on their own horses, on their own saddles without company? And there are plenty of images of women doing just that, riding alone. But you may notice that in some of these images, the women aren't really riding alone. Their horses are being led by young grooms. And one reason for that is because they're riding side saddle, which is a very precarious position. Um, and it requires a sort of handler on the ground to make sure that the horse doesn't move too quickly and unseat the rider. An argument I make in my book is that in the early modern period, travel by any mode on horseback or by any means wasn't necessarily autonomous or voluntary travel for women. This isn't Amelia Earhart alone on her solo transatlantic flight, not yet anyway. In this sense, riding double could be synonymous with being carried off or carried away, not necessarily by choice. And in fact, this is an image that Shakespeare describes in The Taming of the Shrew, in which Katerina, the shrew, is carried off and rides double from Padua to Verona with Petruchio, her newly but not happily wed husband. What I do think is really positive about this image of men and women riding double 
is that it's an image that comes out of the everyday life and experiences of people from up and down the social scale, um, from both urban and rural areas. It gives us a glimpse of the romantic lives of real people who existed long ago. And it's hard to find details about that from the distant past. It tells us how romantic attachment flourished even in the face of very strict rules about women's behavior and their ability to interact with people beyond their own families. And it depicts how closely connected we are as humans to the animals around us, animals that support our own culture, including romantic love, courtship, and marriage. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs>